YouTube. I'm here to do my prediction video for UFC Fight Night uh, Poirier versus Michael Johnson. First fight is Alejandro Perez versus Albert Morales. And Albert Morales looks like a decent up and comer. He's six and zero. You know he's got some decent striking, decent jujitsu, but he just I don't know if he's fought the best people, so it's kind of hard to gauge how good he actually is. Alejandro Perez is already three and one in the UFC, and he's looked good in pretty much every single fight except for the one where he got caught really early and submitted. Um, so I'm going to have to go with Perez just because I've seen him a little bit more. I know that he's pretty decent everywhere, and this is hard to bet on a guy that you don't know how good he is, you know what I mean? So I'm going to pick Perez. I say he wins by decision. Next is Eric Montana versus Randy Brown. And Montana is, you know, a decent submission guy with some striking, but I think Randy Brown's got better striking in an overall game. And, you know, Randy Brown was from that looking for a fighter thing, so I just feel like he's probably the better guy overall. I think his strike is a little bit better, and I think that if it did go to the ground, they'd probably be about even. So I'm going to pick Randy Brown. I think he'll either win by decision or maybe like a late TKO. Next, we got uh, Jose Alberto versus Joey Gomez. And Jose looks decent. He's a good striker, but that's about it. Um, Gomez is also pretty much just a striker, but he looked a lot better. I think in his debut, he had to fight somebody who was really tough, and he lost. But Joey Gomez's striking looks really solid, and I think... Jose looks like, I mean, he's a good striker, but I wouldn't say he's a great striker, and I feel like once fights go to the ground, he kind of just doesn't have a lot to offer off his back, so I'm going to pick Joey Gomez. I just think that his strike is a little bit better, and I think he looks like if he could take this to the ground, he'd probably win pretty easily. Next is Carlos Jr. versus Leandro Augusto, and Leandro Augusto looks like a decent striker, but that's about it. I think uh, when he fought, um, what was his name, Trevor Hotsaw Smith, he was getting outstruck for the majority of the fight, and... Trevor Smith was kind of able to just, aside from when he got tired towards the end, he, he was winning the majority of that fight. I think that uh, Junior's one weakness is that he does get tired and that, you know, he got finished in his last fight because he had a hard time taking to the ground. I don't think he'll have as much as of a hard time as taking Leandro down as he did uh, the judo guy who won, was like an Olympic medalist. So I'm going to pick Carlos. I say he vent, he'll get this fight to the ground over and over again and probably just win a boring 30-27 decision. Next is... Gabriel Benice versus Sam Cecilia and Gabriel looks like he's okay um he looks you know all right he just doesn't amaze me I feel like he's been knocked out before he's you know lost wars before and I feel like Sam Cecilia you know he's kind of up and down too but he's just got a better wrestling in general and I think he's got more power in his punches so I just feel like Sam Cecilia is probably going to win by knockout it's just it, it, it looks like they're trying to just give a lot of guys on this card wins because it looks like a lot of mismatches in my personal opinion. I might be wrong, but it just looks that way to me. Next is um, Augusto Montano versus Bella Muhammad. And, uh, you know, Bella Muhammad didn't look amazing as his debut. In all honesty, he just kind of survived an ass whooping, but that's about it. I mean, he got dropped like two or three times in the first two rounds and then um, I forget who he was fighting, but the guy was just tired in the third, and then he lost the third. But to me, it was like, he was just destroying him for two rounds. That's why he was tired. It's because, I mean, you can only beat somebody's ass for so long before you start to gas. And, I mean, it, it was just really one-sided for the first two rounds, like I said. And then he gassed in the third, and the, uh, Bill Muhammad started to take over. But he didn't look good until the guy gassed himself out, trying to knock him out so many times. Um, and that's something you got to worry about, is when a guy gets hit that much, usually his chin degrades. So... I'm just going to have to go with Augusto. Augusto didn't look great in his last fight either, but I just feel like he didn't really take any damage in it, though, so he could have just, you know, had an off night. So I'm going to have faith in Augusto when I say he wins by knockout. Next is Chase Skelly versus Maximo Blanco, and Maximo Blanco is, like, a decent wrestler with some good striking, but he he overcommits and, like, overswings all the time, and I feel like he ends up in bad positions just because he can't, he doesn't just calm down. He can't just sit there and, like, throw strikes normally. He has to, like, throw these huge looping shots that make him fall over. And I feel like he just wastes a lot of energy and he gives up position a lot. And it's just hard to bet on him a lot of the time. So I'm going to pick Chase Skelly. I just feel like his conditioning is better. And I feel like his wrestling and jujitsu is good enough where if this goes to the ground, um, Maximo probably won't get up. And I think Skelly will eventually take his back and win by submission. Next is Chris Wade versus Islam Makashvili. And Islam, this is a fight between two grappler slash wrestler guys with some striking. I think Ishmael is just the much better grappler overall. And I think he's going to look better whether he's on top or on bottom. And I feel like this fight's going to take place on the ground for the majority of this fight. And even if it did stay standing, I wouldn't say either guy has a real advantage. They're both just kind of okay strikers. 
But I feel like this fight will hit the ground, and when it does, we're going to see uh, Ismail uh, eventually get a submission, probably like a rear naked choke or something. Next is Rowan Carnero versus Kenny Robertson, and these two guys, I don't know, they both haven't fought in a while. Rowan Carnero looks like he's been looking a lot better since he came back to the UFC. I feel like if he can get top position on Kenny, he probably will win by submission. I just don't know if he'll be able to take him down. And Kenny Robertson, you know, he's looked good. He's even though he even in the losses he's had, he's looked really good. So it's kind of really difficult just because these guys haven't fought in like a year. So it's just I don't know where either of them at. But I'm just gonna have to go with Rowan just because he's the bigger guy coming down. And um, there's just they're both just grapplers with some striking. But I just feel like a little more confidence in Rowan right now. But you know, like I said, it's so hard to see, predict just because I haven't seen any of these guys fight in so long. But I'm going to say Rowan wins by first round right naked choke. Next is Evan Dunham versus Rick Lean. And Rick Lean was this pretty good striker from uh, w, uh, w World Series of Fighting. Um, Evan Dunham's obviously been on a really good tear recently. And I just don't feel like Lean is good enough of a grappler to stop Evan Dunham from taking him down and submitting him. I think striking-wise, he's probably a little bit better than Dunham. But I just don't think it's going to matter. I think Evan Dunham's going to... Take this fight to the ground and submit him. And I also feel that because Rick Lean take this fight on such short notice, he's probably not going to have the greatest conditioning, which is unfortunate. But even if he did, I just don't think he'll be able to stop Evan Dunham from taking him down eventually and winning by, like, armbar or something. So that's what I'm going to say. I say second round submission for Dunham. Next is Uriah Hall versus Derek Brunson. And Derek Brunson's been looking pretty good recently. I think a couple of those fights were a little early stop, the ones when he won by TKO. But he still looked good in those fights. I'm not saying he didn't look good. Um, your eye hole is just such an up and down guy. I feel like, you know, he's ranked really high just because he got that one flying technique off on gay guard. But before that, he was getting his at not ass whoop, but he was getting dominated like technically by gay guard. So it's just one of those things where your eye hole has not impressed me at all since he's coming to the UFC. He's like a good striker, but not he's not consistent with it. And his takedown defense isn't amazing. He's been taken down quite a bit. And I feel like Derek Brunson is, you know, he's without a doubt, in my opinion, going to be able to take him down over and over again and just control him and beat him up. Um, unless your eye hall gets lucky with something, um, I just don't see any way he wins this fight. I just feel like Derek Brunson is the better wrestler, and his striking is getting better every single fight. So I'm going to say Brunson wins by, like, TKO maybe by like in the third round. I just feel like sooner or later he's going to get a dominant position just w rain down shots on your eye. And then finally we got Dustin Poirier versus Michael Johnson, and... If this was a three-round fight, I'd pick Johnson pretty easily, but he gets slower as the fight goes on, and I think his biggest strength is his speed. He doesn't have a ton of knockout wins under his belt, so, you know, he's not a one-punch knockout guy. It's kind of like he'll either accumulate damage or he'll catch you with something as you're coming in. I feel like as long as Poirier can, like, keep up the pressure on him and just hit him with body shots as the fight goes, eventually he's going to hurt him. And even if he doesn't hurt him, I think eventually... Uh, Michael Johnson can slow down enough where Poirier can take him down, and if he takes him down, it's going to be super lopsided because Michael Johnson's grappling, in my opinion, isn't that great. I feel like he's been submitted so much, and even recently, his, when he gets when he's on the ground, he just doesn't look amazing uh, jujitsu defense wise and all that. So I think sooner or later, Dustin Poirier is going to get this fight to the ground and win by like rear naked choke or something. It might be late. I think it might be fourth, maybe even fifth. But like I said, sooner or later, this fight's going to hit the ground, and when it does, I think Poirier is going to win by submission. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Please like and subscribe.